Greetings to all our Columbian College graduates. Thank you for joining us for this virtual celebration and congratulations to each of you on a job well done. Let me begin by saying that I hope you and your loved ones are safe and healthy. The fallout from COVID-19 has changed our world, but what it has not done is diminish your remarkable academic achievement. You've worked hard to get to where you are today, and I'm confident that once we regain a semblance of normalcy, you will have every opportunity to pursue your passion and make your mark on the world. Your graduation captures a moment in time, representing all that you've accomplished as a student. It is now your turn to confer knowledge, to advance your field, and to move the frontiers of knowledge. Today marks an end point, but it's also a new beginning. You may not realize it right now, but what you've experienced the knowledge you've acquired, the analytical reasoning and critical thinking skills you've picked up along the way, and yes, even what you're experiencing in this uncertain environment will resonate throughout your personal and professional lives. What happens next is now up to you. How will you take what you've learned and experienced to make a meaningful impact in the communities and the world beyond? There are three traits that I believe will carry you far in your journey. The first is resilience. You are no stranger to challenges. You've taken demanding courses, written difficult papers graded by exacting faculty, been involved in arduous research projects, and made class presentations that have pushed you out of your comfort zone. This past semester, you've managed to pivot on a dime to overcome the challenges of remote learning and the stress of pandemic to complete your degree. You are here today because your resilience has enabled you to prevail. Be confident in that strength. Resilience in the face of difficulty will take you a long way on your journey to have a successful and satisfying life, both professionally and personally. The second trait that I believe is critical in the context of this moment is innovation. GW students are defined by innovation. You have the creative instinct to be problem solvers. You've written musical compositions and cracked computer codes. You've solved complex policy puzzles and looked deeply into cells and stars to explore scientific mysteries. And you've offered new insights on our evolutionary past, our political present, in our environmental future. Our alumni are reflective of this innovative and creative spirit. They've directed award-winning movies, launched billion-dollar tech companies, started nonprofit foundations, and created pathways to sustainable futures. They, like you, chose GW because they wanted to be part of a culturally vibrant, politically active, and diverse community in the heart of the nation's capital. They, like you, chose to embrace challenge and find innovative ways to impact lives and create positive change. The third and final trait I want to underscore today is compassion, the ability to empathize and be mindful and caring of others. You came here because you wanted to be part of something that was bigger than yourself. You wanted to make a difference in the world around you. I've heard recently stories about students and alumni who, in the wake of COVID-19, are running food banks, managing community efforts to make and distribute face masks, and volunteering on the front lines to assist EMTs. I love hearing these stories, and I'm proud to say I'm not surprised by them. This is what being a GW student is all about. I encourage you to continue caring for the communities in which you live, to help and support others, and to resist the temptation to look inward. Creating and maintaining these meaningful connections within your community will lead to a rewarding life. This health crisis has changed the world you're entering as a graduate, which I'm sure is heavily weighing on you now. But I'm confident that your resilience, creativity, 
and compassion will carry you through. You will weather this storm and you will be stronger for it. This is one of those rare moments in our history that requires each of us to go the extra mile, to do more in the way of sacrifice and service, to be the problem solvers, the movers and shakers, the healers, thinkers, and doers. You are smart and innovative, and you are ready to soar and meet the challenges that lay ahead. It's important to remain agile, to continue to adapt, to navigate through every disappointment and build upon every success. I'm humbled by your talent and passion and thankful for the part we played in helping you get here. Although you're graduating, your home at Columbian College will always be here for you. Your faculty are here to support you whenever you need us, as will our global network of GW alumni. We look forward to you staying in touch and even paying it forward if you can. In the years ahead, perhaps you'll mentor a student, volunteer to support a project, or give to scholarships that open doors for others to pursue their dreams. Thank you for letting us be a part of your journey. I wish you all the best in the exciting adventure ahead, and I look forward to welcoming you back to campus next year for the on-campus graduation festivities. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Before moving on to our keynote speaker, I want to recognize this year's recipient of the Award for Excellence in Graduate Faculty Mentoring, Aiko Strader, an Assistant Professor of Public Policy, Sociology, and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. Mentoring and advising are crucial to the intellectual life and career trajectories of our graduate students, and I appreciate all that Professor Strader has done to help our students succeed. It is now my privilege to introduce Columbian College alumnus and distinguished scholar of art history, Daniel Weiss. Dr. Weiss currently serves as president and chief executive officer of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. We are thrilled he was able to join us for this special celebration of your achievement. It is a pleasure to be here with you today to celebrate your graduation from college. I join your family, your friends, the faculty at GW, the administration, and your fellow alumni in honoring this moment and celebrating with you. I'm quite sure it was not in your plan that you would spend this moment at home celebrating this great milestone in your lives, maybe even in your pajamas. This is a remarkable moment in the history of the world, and it is a major milestone in your lives. And both are important. And what I'd like to do in just a few moments is to think about that with you, to reflect a little bit on what it means to be graduating from college at this moment in the history, uh, a remarkable moment in the history of the world. So what does it mean to be graduating in the middle of the great pandemic of 2020? What, what can we understand and learn from this experience? Well, first of all, I think for the first time in our lifetimes, in a very, very long time, the entire world is more or less aligned around a single problem. We're not working against each other. We're not in competition around what it is that one nation can do against another. But all of us are trying to learn how we can conquer this virus and try to restore the world to some sense of normalcy. And for the first time, and hopefully it will endure, we can work together around the world to solve a problem of massive proportions. So that's one thing we might reflect on from this experience. Another is that we're learning something new about what it means to be interconnected. It's one thing to share the internet or to have a kind of global commitment to commerce. But in fact, what we're learning from this pandemic is we're all connected to each other. In fact, we are all physically connected to each other that this pandemic, which runs through the world, began with one person and is now all over the world. So we learn something about our dependence on one another and how we need to work together in order to create solutions and build a better world. I think that's an important observation. That dependence is, is uh, absolutely fundamental. Another is how will we learn in this new environment to live together, to work together 
as social beings in an environment that will focus on social isolation. We can't be communities in quarantine for a very long time without there being debilitating consequences. So we have to learn how to work through this moment and to build an opportunity to be communities once again, but in an environment where we have to take care for our physical health and for the public safety to be a bit more isolated. This is a creative challenge of significance. And then I think another moment, another reason to reflect on this moment is to ask ourselves, as the world is changing, as we face so much disruption and change, is this a moment for us to do better? Is this a moment for the world to, to look at old problems in new ways? Can we think about how we might ensure the public health at a higher level? How we might cooperate more effectively at a global level? Might we think about the environment in new ways? When the world becomes disrupted, there are opportunities to learn, there are chances that we have to do things better. So I think beyond reflecting on what, uh, what a challenge this is and how unfortunate it is that all of us are sitting at home selling your celebrating your graduation in this way, it is also a moment to do things differently. And you have an opportunity, in some ways an unprecedented opportunity, really to change the world. And I would invite you to think about that because it's right in front of you. Your time at GW has helped you in various ways, I think, to be more effective and more prepared to do that kind of work. First of all, they've taught you how to listen. As a student, you are, in some ways, professional listeners, learning how, as it were, to learn. We don't learn so much in college that is what's important. It's what we, that we learn how to learn, giving us an opportunity to do better. And when we leave college, we're equipped with the skills and the experiences to be nimble learners, to be able to navigate in a world that's changing very quickly. So as you look to the future, think about what you've learned at GW, what skills that you've developed, and how you can deploy them to make a difference in a world that's changing right before your eyes. So I want to offer you up that opportunity to celebrate with you this moment and to invite you to do something important in the world in the next few days, weeks, and months. Um, you're beginning a new chapter in your lives. We celebrate with you today. So as soon as you're allowed to leave the house, go out and change the world. Congratulations. Hello to the graduating class of 2020. I am so unbelievably honored to be addressing you virtually today. I wish we were there in person. I know how hard you've worked. And there's nothing I want more than to be able to give you all a huge high five uh, for finishing your research and for completing your graduate education during these unbelievably stressful times. I've been trying to think of what I could say to you that would convey both the scale of the situation that we're in and also the tremendous achievement you've earned during this time. And it's rare, I'm an English professor, but words are failing me right now. I kept trying to rack my brain for the appropriate quotation. Um, and all I kept thinking about, I teach Shakespeare, and all I kept thinking about was Polonius um, in Hamlet as he's giving all of these terrible words of advice to Laertes as he leaves for school. And Laertes isn't listening to him. And you know these advice, they often show up, um, these quotes show up in graduation cards you know, to thine own self be true, neither a borrower nor a lender be. Um, but when you read the scene closely, like I have, and you, when you do more sustained focus, you realize that those platitudes don't often get us very far, especially when your audience are graduate students. We've, you know, trained you to be skeptical of such easy answers, and you've done that hard work. You've learned to look deeper um, and to see the complexity um, beneath the surface. And in these moments, it's, it's harder to find just the right words other than, I'm so very proud of you. I'm so unbelievably in awe of what you've managed to achieve. I've often tell my graduate students that when they're doing advanced graduate research, they're not just training to become experts. They're not just mastering the content that will define them as an expert in their field, but they're also learning the habits of mind and of work that allows them to pursue advanced research at the very highest level. That they're learning to see both the scale of the problem 
And then they're also learning to hone in and focus their attention, even when there are real distractions on that area of the problem in which we can push forward and reach new knowledge. And you've done that. You've done that now. And you've done that in a time when focusing on what you can achieve is ever more and increasingly difficult. And so I have no pithy quote. I have no um, greeting card worthy statement other than congratulations. It is tremendous what you've achieved. And it has filled me with real hope for the future at a time when I didn't have very much. Um, and so thank you and raise high. Friends, think of your favorite hero and their journey of growth. Whether it's Simba from The Lion King, Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, or Moses from the Old Testament, the pattern is the same. First chaos ensues and the protagonist leaves home, which forces them to leave their comfort zones. Next, the protagonist finds a mentor who helps them confront their weaknesses, helps them find their powers, and helps them find their confidence. With this newfound courage, the hero then confronts adversity. The fourth and last element, the hero is forever changed and uses their powers in the service of others. We are hearing a lot about heroes today, serving others in hospitals, at the grocery stores, or citizens practicing social distancing. But what is a hero? As a member of the United States Navy for 16 years, I think that the concept of a hero is best explained as a journey of growth and the use of someone's talents in the service of others. How does this relate to you? Three points. First, most of us have completed steps one through three during our heroic journey at George Washington University. We have left our comfort zones, found a mentor or mentors, and confronted adversity. Now it's time for us to use our powers in the service of others. This is our responsibility. Second point, this heroic journey of growth is unique to everyone. We each have our own distinct comfort zones. We have our own demons to face and different purposes to serve. Forge your own unique path to find your life filled with meaning. Third, the last and most important point, there's always a sequel. This four step heroic journey is a lifelong cycle and is never complete, but that's the fun part. To my fellow graduates and to the graduates of the United States Naval Academy and George Washington University's Leadership Education Development Program, a heartfelt congratulations on your accomplishment. Luckily, today and tomorrow presents us with a tremendous opportunity to be heroic. Here's our call to action. For our own personal good and for the good of society, we need to keep leaving our comfort zones. We need to keep learning from others because there will be moments when we don't have the necessary skills or confidence. We need to keep confronting challenges and keep using our abilities in the service of others. Be a hero. Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Ann Gresham and I am from the beautiful island nation of Antigua and Barbuda. It is a tremendous honor and privilege to share this celebratory moment with all of you, despite the incredibly trying circumstances in which we find ourselves. As we commemorate the achievements that led us to this milestone, let us reflect on the events that made our graduation possible in spite of the landscape shifting unpredictably beneath our feet. For many of us, it can seem a pyrrhic victory to make it this far, but we should take pride in our tenacity and commitment to seeing our work through to its completion. I'm very proud to be named as a CCAS Graduate Distinguished Scholar for the 2019-2020 academic year. I am not only proud for its celebration of my achievements in academics and leadership, 
but also for its timely recognition of the value of an education in the humanities. The interdisciplinary program in women's, gender, and sexuality studies has helped me to develop my own voice as a feminist. It has given me the tools to make inroads into scholarship that centers Caribbean feminist thought, as well as the experiences of women of color from the global South. A humanities education has prepared many students like me to navigate the pitfalls of this current crisis. As my mentor, Professor Sarah Matheson recently shared, we cannot make sense of things if we are not first grounded and solid in ourselves, our convictions, and our visions for what comes next. This is the kind of humanistic thinking that orients us toward having compassion for those experiencing displacement, grief, discrimination, domestic violence, and insecurity. As I remain grounded in my feminist convictions, I am encouraged by the fact that we have equal intrinsic value. Even those of us who, like me, come from the smallest places in the world, we all have equal intrinsic value as agents of systemic and transformative change. Finally, as we prepare to transition away from academia to an uncertain future, let us use our time to commit to our own healing and to visions of renewal for a more hopeful and luminous tomorrow. Congratulations to my fellow CCAS Graduate Distinguished Scholar and congratulations to all of you. I'm pleased to present the class of 2020.